definitely going to be topsy-turvy and unsettled. Sally and John. Bracket again. Uh, Carol, thank you very much indeed. You know, we, we need to put some food on your map this morning because we're talking about the food Ooh. around the UK. Aren't yeah, we? I like the sound of that. Yeah. Yeah. You'll enjoy this. You'll enjoy this. Carol would love this. From egg fried rice in Glasgow. That would be great. To Venezuelan street food in Northern Ireland, also brilliant. The whole world really is on our doorstep at local food markets. Yeah, there's a new BBC Two series. It's called the Coast to Coast Food Festival. They've been sampling the delights at some of the best all over the UK. Presenters Edith Bowman and Colin Murray tried their hand at preparing oysters at the Stranra Oyster Festival. I love an oyster, but I'm not mm. sure I trust them. What do you think? Yeah, I trust them. Let's go. <laughs> you really are. So are you ready? I'm That's going. Go. Keep going from side to side until you feel it going in. There you go, got it. I'm in. And then twist. That's it. So now the meat is on the top. On the on top. top. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. I always assumed it was on the bottom. As you both, but you've got to do the top first. And then how do you open it? So twist it. Do it that way. Yeah. So that way. There you go. It. Okay. And, and now the muscle, if you can scrape on the top shell. Up to under my finger. That's where the adductor muscle is holding. So uh, I just keep going in? Yeah, when you're going to cut here. Look, just there. There. Just there. Okay. So that's it. So scrape up. So that, 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 that is perfect. Yours is imperfect. Because you should be having it. It should be, it should be it in this be part of the shell. The There's a bit of shell there. That's, that's a penalty. From this bit. How would you eat it? Tell Slurp me. Slurp it in and chew it up. Yeah? So give it a good chew, From yeah? this bit? Yep. Cut it, shut it, eat it. <laughs> Oh, that was delicious. I'm delighted to say Edith is here with us now. That looked fabulous. Love an oyster. You couldn't get Colin to try couldn't one. Couldn't get him to try one. Why? Uh, he's, um, you know, he's so worse. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he was just full because you've been sampling stuff everywhere, haven't there you? Is that. What there else is have that. you tried? Oh, I mean, so many beautiful things. Um, I've got to say, when we were in Manchester, actually, we tried these amazing biscuits that were made by this beautiful man who'd changed his job career he was a plumber and then through lockdown he did lots of baking which is what he'd always done as a kid with his dad decided i'm going to change my career and so he had this stall at the food festival in manchester he went to selling his biscuits which were delish i love that isn't it because lots of the stuff that you talk about you're talking about is stuff that you know we've eaten before it's familiar to us yeah but it's done in a much more particular more careful way more care basically yeah and it's what's been really nice is traveling all over the UK and, and Northern Ireland and just telling all these stories about these people and their relationships with food, whether it's Syrian refugees in York or whether it's uh, the guy who runs the fish market in St George's Market in Belfast. It's, everyone's got a story to tell around food and that's kind of what we, we try to do with the show. It's a bit like we were talking about David Attenborough's new show last night, celebrating the wildlife that's on our doorstep. Yeah. And this is uh, celebrating the food on our doorstep that maybe we didn't always realised was there, was there all yeah, the stories and, attached to it. Exactly, and celebrating, you know, the produce that's literally around the corner from mm. you that you maybe didn't know. Mm. So a great guy in York as well, who's this young farmer, he married into farming, and he set up an orchard in the farm because he wanted to bring back all these apples that were almost going to become extinct. And it's just stories like that, things that we know are part of our British cuisine mm. um, that we kind of forget about or take for granted. And do you think we're getting any better at perhaps buying more locally? I think the conversation's there. It's definitely uh, a much more regular conversation to encourage people to do that. It's not always affordable because sometimes shopping local can be more expensive. But I think because it's more uh, a regular conversation, it's definitely something that I think a lot more people are, are trying to do. I guess that's the thing, isn't it? Sometimes food festivals can be expensive. Yeah. It can be sort of very high end and that might put a lot of people off. Yeah, and I think that... There are those kind of artisan mm. options, but you can find really good local produce at kind of really good prices as well. And one of the things I know that you talk about is that it's not always just about the food, is it? I know the food is the way in, yeah. but it's actually about communities and how people care for each other. And like you, you know, gave us an example of people changing careers and yeah. changing their lives and making food at the centre of it. Food connects people. You know, that thing when you sit around the table, whether with friends or family, it starts conversation. It's a beautiful way of unifying people. We, we've got this lovely story in the in the York programme about this, this Syrian refugee lady who taught us to make the most delicious hummus, um, where she, you know, she's been so grateful for everything she's been given by the community, how welcome she's been, how generous everyone's been, but she wants to give back. And for her to find a way to do that is quite difficult. And the way to do that for her was through food. 
through these pop-up restaurants where she was able to share her recipes and her cuisine with, with the community. And so for her, it was a beautiful way to say thank you. And that's, that opens up a conversation within yeah. her community. Yeah. yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. really nice. Yeah. Yeah. So go on, tell us then, what's the secret recipe for hummus? Because that's <laughs> immediately... Uh, well, you'll have to watch oh, no, to no, find no. out. But it's so easy. Because when I make it, it's terrible. Yeah, well, uh, same. Don't say yes. Yeah, but, but she... Yeah. Um, <laughs> bring it in next yeah. time. Um, but it's it's so easy. We, we make it with her. So, yeah, there's very simple step by step. Do you call and eat the hummus? Uh, it wasn't with Colin on that one, it was with Sean Fletcher okay. on that one. So Colin and I did Scotland and Northern Ireland. I see. Sean Fletcher and I did uh, England, and then Sean did the Wales shows of these ones. Right. So, yeah. Okay, if Colin wouldn't eat the oysters, yeah. what did you come across that you perhaps were not oh. so keen on? So when we were in, I think it was Bally Castle in Northern Ireland, he was taking me through some Northern Irish delicacies, as he called Go them. On. And one of them was this um, seaweed, like, oh. snack. Oh. What? <laughs> Never. Not, I love seeing. I, I do like in Japanese cooking, mm. but I'm not quite sure what, if it had literally been picked off the beach and chucked in <laughs> yes. a, a bag. It was winding you up. I was like, yeah, probably. Did you try it? <laughs> yeah. I'm so gullible. <laughs> <laughs> you've had a busy old weekend, haven't you? Because you've been at Country to Country yeah, in Glasgow as well. I just finished last night uh, up at the, uh, the Hydro in Glasgow. Yeah. It was fantastic. It was really lovely. I mean, country music's something I've grown up with, with my dad, big fan and things, but I've never kind of really honed in and focused on it. And it was lovely that Bob Harris and Radio 2 invited me to be part of that. And yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm heading home to get my steps and out. And my <laughs> Do it. And yeah, I'd love to go to Nashville. Well, what was the vibe? What, what was the demographic there? Because all, all ages. I mean, there was tiny little kids, I'd say about five, six, right through to granddads. Um, just a beautiful, happy, celebratory... Um, atmosphere and do you know the thing I noticed at the hydro you know when you go to gigs now and everybody's got their phones out and they're filming it rather than watching it mm. nobody had their phones out wow they're a really attentive audience and it's about storytelling yes that's what country music's always been about telling good stories so yeah it's great talking about stories have yeah. you been watching the Oscars overnight I probably Highlights? should have gone to bed early oh okay have. What, what have you made of it because I know you're such a film buff what I listen I I kind of almost wish there didn't have to be winners I kind of like, the no and the nominations are, and that should be it, because I was gutted that Elvis didn't win anything. Nothing. I really, and, and, and the Banshees, what a film. Didn't and nothing, get anything. Nothing. So I, I don't want to take away anything from anyone, but I just wish that they could have picked up, particularly Austin, I just think his commitment to that role was extraordinary. Mm. Um, so I was, I was gutted for, for Elvis and Banshees. It's surprising, really, isn't it? Because it, it seemed so open this year and people were yeah. saying, oh, there's going to be loads of winners. And in the end, it just utterly dominated by... Yeah, I mean, I think Michelle, Michelle Yeoh in particular, it's, it's a, it was a beautiful moment and a, a deserved moment, not just for representation on culture, but on age as well, mm. I think. That, that was a beautiful thing. Um, and also to see the the Irish short film win as well, and James gets sung Happy Birthday. I was like, I was bawling my eyes out <laughs> in the car on the way down from Glasgow. Just after last year's drama on stage, it seems like there's an awful yeah. lot of goodwill there this year. Yeah, I thought like the show was nice, great. Yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed watching it, yeah. OK, well, we'll be back on the red carpet with, uh, or blue carpet, or champagne carpet, <laughs> wherever it is this year, uh, with Colin Patterson in a few minutes' time. But, uh, Edith, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Uh, lovely to see you. And you can watch Coast to Coast, Food Festival, BBC Two and BBC iPlayer on weekdays at 6.30. Do stay with us. The headlines are coming right up.